You can make a great living selling real estate, but you can make a great life by investing in real estate. Today, I'm joined by, in my opinion, the eminent professional when it comes to real estate investing for realtors. That's Mr. Fred Tishauer, my friend from Omaha, Nebraska. We're going to share with you exactly what you can do to invest in your first property or to set yourself up for the life you dream of. All right, Fred, this is a conversation since I first met you probably five years ago that I've been really excited to share with people because I know how transformative investing in real estate, what it can do for people's lives, for their families, for generations. And so um, as you are not just an expert on this, you've literally written the books on this. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. But let's talk, Fred, just give people a little bit of background, where you're located, kind of how you got started in investing and a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind. Well, thank Jeremy for having me. I <clears throat> appreciate it. Uh, I consider you an amazing uh, real estate role model and a friend. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Very Fred. simple. Uh, you know, I came in this country when I was 13 years old. I didn't know a word of English. I was a troublemaker in school, classified as a juvenile delinquent. And uh, I was told that the next time I uh, come to the office, I'm going to get kicked out of school. One thing led to another. Well, I'll never remember what they told me that I would end up in jail if I didn't get my act together. So that's kind of the beginning of me. To, I better straighten up. So my dad, when he came to this country, made a grand total of $65,000 from 1963 to 1974. They made a huge impression on me. Moving forward to when I turned 21 years old, I had a real estate agent by the name of Jerry Sakunas, who literally took me on this wing and he showed me the path that I could follow verbatimly, I follow his path. And without Jerry, I would not be where I'm at today. That's why it's so important as agents to think about mentoring someone that you may not think has the wherewithal right now, but you can make such a great impact on that person. So that's my my main reason for wanting to do this. I want to help real estate agents do the same thing that Jerry did for me. So today, I'm in Omaha, Nebraska, by the way. Today, I own a very sizable real estate portfolio that generates a six-figure income. So retirement, I can retire anytime I want. So I don't need one more commission check. I can live quite well with my, my rental properties that most of them are paid off. So I've been very blessed with real estate and I feel a responsibility now to do this. And if I can make an impact with agents, which I have, I want to make impact with more agents. So that's kind of a little bit about my background, why I'm so passionate about real estate. It's not so much how much money you make, but what you do with the money you make. You could make six-figure income. It can be poor, live paycheck to paycheck, or you can make $30,000 and be a millionaire. It's just a matter of where you put your priorities. You put your priorities on buying things that you need or buying things that you want. So that, by way of why I think real estate is the most amazing investment option by far. No, it absolutely does. And Fred, listen, I, you know, as, as we've gotten to know each other a little better and as I've gotten to know, you know, so many of the people that you have mentored and how it has changed their life. Um, that's what I'm excited about today is, is really to kind of break this down because I know that like when we first started talking, you know, some of the basics. So I think what we want to do today really is, is give people some foundational things. And then also those person that's here, that's listening, that has got a one or two or three properties on how do they continue to grow their portfolio to get to that point where they have a replacement income um, and not have to work with that. So let's talk a little bit about from that standpoint, Fred, um, how did this look for you as you got started? What did this look like and how has that changed over the years as far as how you're evaluating properties or the type of properties you're looking for? It's a great deal. Honestly, when I was 21, 22, 23, I was trying to figure out a way, how do I supplement my income? As I got into it, I became wiser. It became a student in this game. Uh, I, I see, I saw real estate, a totally different point of view. It wasn't so much about buying real estate, it's about buying an asset that's going to appreciate in value over time. And then when the properties are paid off via the tenant, you could generate a very sizable income and become a millionaire. But one property at a time. One property is great. When you get to 10 properties, that's a business. You treat a business a lot more than one property. One property is playtime, pastime. When you have 10, 15, 20, 30, 50 properties, it's a legitimate business, which I think that's where most people fail. They are not seeing real estate as a business. So from that standpoint, 
what does that look like? Because obviously, um, this is something we see with real estate agents a lot of times is, is that they view their, uh, their their salespeople not running a real estate sales business. Let's right. talk about the difference between that, um, between in, investing in one property and it being just a hobby versus making this a business. What What's that difference in your mind? Well, for one is, I uh, I think you have to make good decisions. You have to have a, a business plan for one. What, what right. does it look like? Short-term, long-term objectives. What kind of property do you want to buy? What areas? Who's the target market? What's the demographics? Are you looking to buy properties that need work? Are you looking to buy properties that are ready to go? Uh, so I think case by case, that's why it's important to sit down with agents or lay people and ask them, what exactly are you looking for? Are you looking for wealth building? Are you looking for retirement income? Are you looking for financial freedom? To me, that's the big why of real estate, why it's important. When you understand the big why, you'll treat this more like a business. Of course, the cash flow, the appreciation, principal reduction, tax benefits, all made possible by the power of leverage is the most amazing business that anyone can own when you have someone else helps you actually pay pay down the debt and you can still make money every month it's it's the most amazing thing i've ever seen we make this way more complicated than it should be it's very simple but let's talk right. about tax benefits let's talk about the difference that that makes let's talk about um, identifying properties specifically that are going to cash flow can you speak a little bit about the tax benefits and then what are the things you look at um, when you're looking and evaluating a property from a cash flow perspective. Okay. The first thing I look at is um, one is the tax benefits. That is the number one reason people should be doing this. I don't know too many people. They are very happy with the amount of taxes they're paying every year, including me. Yeah. The question is, if you're not happy, what are you going to do differently? There's no other investment option that offers you the benefits of tax Tax benefits, the appreciation principle reduction. You can invest money in the stock market. The only benefit you get involved in the stock market is when you lose money. That's a benefit. Otherwise, you got to pay access. So what does it look like? I look for properties that have investment potential. For example, there are a lot of properties that number one is you fall in love with the deal, not the property. See, a lot of people don't want to be inconvenienced. So they want to buy a property five minutes away from where they live. To me, that's a big mistake. You want to buy properties. Number one is family friendly. Will this property meet your criteria for wealth building, retirement, financial freedom? When you understand that, you keep doing, repeating it over, over, and over. This doesn't have to be complicated. You look for properties commensurate with your level of experience. Maybe your first property, you may need as simple as up. You've got to do something to update the property to be able to justify the price, obviously, where you can get uh, appreciation just for buying it. You know, you don't need to buy a property and wait for the next five years to go up 4% a year. You buy a property 30, 40% under market value and you put, you know, 10 cents to make it worth a dollar. That's pretty much the model that I've used, continue to use with my people. Fall in love with the deal, not the property. Yeah, that's really and good. That serves you very well. You'll never, you'll never lose money in real estate, when you fall in love with the deal, not the property. So that's yeah. been pretty much, even though it sounds simple, that's as simple as I can make it. Yeah. And when you don't know. No, that's great, Fred. You you mentioned this. I, I think it was you or it may have been, um, you know, Sean or Vince, one of your folks that you've trained um, that had basically uh, said it to me this way. You've got to try to find and be willing to take a few headaches in order to make it make the dollars, trading those a few of those headaches of doing those repairs, getting it up to that place where most people aren't willing to do that, to add some uh, some equity in there. Um, you've talked to me also about just looking from a standpoint that, hey, as long as you've got something that with the amount that you put down, with the, the repairs that you do, that the that you're looking at, you've got a positive cash flow, that that is being paid for, and that that asset is the opportunity to continue to appreciate. But I think a lot of times people forget about how inflation affects your rents also. So that even though as your debt is going down and you're in locked in at a certain price, you're actually seeing your margins get better. You want to speak to that over time? What oh, that looks I mean, like. it's amazing. I, uh, I've i had properties that I own today start at $750 a month in Omaha at that time. Now I'm getting $1,450 a month and the property's paid off. 
That's mm -hmm. pretty hard to be trying to get that kind of a raise working for someone else. So uh, that's that's amazing thing. I think yeah. one of the biggest issues, Jimmy, is that people want it today. They don't want it tomorrow. They've got they don't want to work for it. They want the easy. They want the latest gimmick. When you do real estate the old fashioned way by working hard, being methodical, monitoring, treating like a business and five years from now, principles to reduce 10 years from now, to reduce 15 years from now, the property's paid off. So you get 10 properties like that, Jimmy, generating you know, $1,200 a month, let's say it comes up to $144,000 a year, less tax insurance, $50,000 for expenses. You have $100,000 retirement income for the rest of your life and a couple, two, $3 million of uh, net worth, all made possible by the tenant. That's because you have to think long-term, not short-term. See, cash flow is a matter of how much cash flow do you need. Is cash flow the most important thing? Then there are properties available for someone that needs cash flow where they don't make enough money to worry about their, their tax benefits. Most people, especially real estate agents, need tax benefits. And that's really, uh, it's beyond me why more are not investing in their own industry and rely on a commission check. Look where we are today with our industry. See, that's why, personally, my hard work paid off where I don't need one more commission check. I'll be just fine. Is that's that great? Kind of yeah, that's great. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about the differences in the types of investments. I mean, you've got so many different things, whether it be a fix and flip, whether it be a cash flow property, whether it be wholesale, whatever it is. Is there a particular area that you would suggest for the person who's starting out um, that they would kind of concentrate on? And what would they need to do to prepare for that either first or next property that they're uh -huh. purchasing? The first thing they need to do, number one, is make sure that they have a real estate agent on their side they know more than they do. That's that's the key. I call it a residential investment special. You can't sell to someone else when you yourself aren't buying. So I always suggest to people, whether they say, I like to buy an apartment, I like to buy a, uh, an industrial building, I like to buy a duplex, a fourplex, a house. The first question is why? What is your objective? Do you wanna walk or do you wanna run by buying something bigger than you should? See, you want to buy a property that if you ever, things don't work out for a reason, you're able to sell it to an owner-occupied buyer. When you deal with multi-units and above, you the, the, the people that are going to be interested in those properties are investors. Trying to get two investors to get the, you can start a fire rubbing, rubbing two rocks. So yeah. that's why, personally, I don't encourage anybody that else to do something that I have done myself. So my niche market, my comfort zone has always been houses and duplexes. That's where my portfolio is. And uh, I've never, ever dreamed I'm going to need to have a hundred unit apartments. People don't understand when is enough enough. See, they want to have the, the door doors just bugs me. Okay. I like to call it properties. Why do you need a thousand doors? What are you going to do with the money? Are you going to give it to charity? To me, you get 10 to 20 properties that will set you up for life. So right. that is manageable. Because the more properties you have, the more headaches you have. If something happens, then you get over leverage. You keep refinancing. You never get to the wealth creation because you're constantly buying, refinancing. So your net worth, you may have, uh, you know, uh, um, you know the the assets, but you got a lot of liability. At some point, when you get to be old like me, you want to have your assets, very little liabilities. So wow. then you're prepared. If something happens, you know, you're you're ready. So houses and duplex is my niche market. And that's where I encourage most of my clients. Otherwise, I would be uh, I would I would be a hypocrite and could say, why don't why don't you invest in an apartment? I tell them why. I don't want to deal with eight tenants. I rather do one roof. When you buy an apartment, you're dealing with a lot of complexities that you don't know anything about. You got somebody that smokes marijuana, some that's music too loud, somebody gets in a fight, the good tenants will move out. When you deal with a house, it's totally different. So that's to me seems to make sense. More importantly, 65% of the people that buy real estate are, are the same people that they should be working with, the same people they're working with on a day-to-day -day basis. 65% is the magic number. 35% of all people across the country are renters, if you think about it. And most of them are in houses and small uh, in duplexes. The biggest majority of people, that's the space that they're renting. And uh, so to me, it's an amazing thing that more people should be doing, especially real estate agents. People need our help, Jimmy. 
People need our help. They just don't know why they should be investing. It's not about buying a house. It's not about buying It's about buying a, an asset that will provide for you the day when you need to hang it up to retire. The workplace today is the least desirable income source of all. People are getting laid off, no control, paycheck to paycheck. They're concerned about the economy. They're, they're not saving any money. They don't have a college education plan for the children. Uh, and they're worrying if they're going to lose their job or not. And the great thing about real estate is it always answers the what if question. If this happens, can you weather the storm? We're in this market right now with real estate agents. How are you going to weather the storm? My, in my book, working with real estate investors is the ticket right now for agents to remain relevant. Yeah. And so, Fred, I've, you know, I've seen people. That. Yeah, no, I and I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think this is the thing is the consistency of that and the opportunities that are there. You know, I've got some friends of mine that are in the business that all they do is work with investors and um, residential, you know, like you say, the primary residence or duplexes. And what they're seeing is, is obviously it's very easy because like you said, it's finding those deals and then the deals will sell themselves um, to the investor who understands that. And I always say investors are typically, um, they're almost like, um, you know, a shark can't stop swimming. It has to keep swimming. An investor is typically either looking to add an additional property, they're looking to reposition a property, or they're considering um, what it is that they need to possibly liquidate a property to, to, to gain some a little bit of liquidity. So when you're working with investors, this is a, it's, it's typically, you know, when we're doing typical residential, now they're saying, crazy numbers, like 18 years, the average person lives in their home before they sell it. You if you're go. building clients for life, you need to be building some of these folks that are consistently doing business because then you don't have to go out and recreate new relationships exactly. every time. Exactly. So um, let's talk about some of the I, things. I, like, I, I want to, before I forget, I want to answer your question. You asked me the difference between buy and hold, buy and flip. See, those are two good options to work together hand in hand. People keep in mind when you're flipping, you're 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 making a living. You're not creating wealth by flipping. So you could do both. Some properties may be more suitable to flip, but that means that the price point has to be much lower. The same house that would make a uh, may not make a good fl flipping property may make an excellent rental property as long as the property cash flow. So part of the advice as well, realtor we need to give is why do you want to flip? Most of the time. The answer they give is the wrong answer. I want to flip because I want to have enough money to be able to buy a, 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 another house. See, why why pay 50% in taxes that, to Uncle Sam? Why not refinance that property and pull the majority of money about and can continue to build wealth? Flipping, if you're a high-income producer, flipping is the worst strategy of all. You want to burden less in your taxes, not add more to your taxes. So as agents, we have to guide our people to understand and I think that's how we get paid, not by getting a commission. We get paid by being an advisor, a coach, a mentor, a wealth advisor. They want to be, they want your guidance. You know, they don't trust real estate agents. When you work with investors, that's an amazing relationship that you build with them. They trust you, become friends with them. So that's flipping, buy and hold. It, it, they're both great strategies. And uh, you got to have the crew to do the work. Who's going to do the work? So you got to have contractors and this and that. But once once you get a system, you know, you repeat it over and over. The same paint, same tile, same vinyl plane flooring, same paint outside, same appliances. It's easy. Like you can push a button. Once you get started, this is an amazing thing. You can replicate time after time after time. So I don't know if that answers your question. I'm flipping no, it's or not. Great. Yeah. And listen, I think, you know, that's that's the Clients for Life book that I love so much. Talks about building those relationships and building those clients um, as investors. Let's let's kind of wrap up with this. Let's talk to the person who is trying to let's say here we are as we're speaking. We're in uh, the end of 2023. They want a goal they have for next year is to buy their first rental property. What are some of the things they should do to prepare? Obviously, I would say read your books first. Number two, I would say, what are those things like? savings wise what are those things they should be um studying what should they be looking for and who should they be looking for as far as an agent even if they're an agent that they're not familiar with doing this that they should possibly be reaching out to to help them on that first purchase first and foremost they have to know what their credit score is see a credit score is the most important thing unless you're looking to do something that I don't agree with. I'm 100% opposed to it. 
wholesaling to me is a thorn on my side. And that's a, another topic. If if you are looking for gimmicks, if you don't have good credit, a real estate agent really can't help you. Having good credit, having a little bit of a financial statement, you got to know what your net worth is because your net worth, you, you got to know. Uh, if you don't have any enough money saved, uh, every paycheck, they can save 15 to 20% of their paycheck. At the end of the year, they can have enough for a down payment. There's better ways of doing it, Jimmy, better strategies, but we don't have time to talk about it today. So 15 to 20%, at the end of the year, you might have enough money. That What they've got to keep in mind, they're not going to live in the property. They're not going to live in the property. So this is not something like that. So set, then, then the most important after that, you've got to have an agent that is more knowledgeable than you are. I call a real estate investment agent. Have a business plan. Anybody that needs a business plan, then reach out to me. I'll help them. I already talked about saving the money. This is a this is one that most people have a hard time. Live below your means. See, living below your means is not as popular as it should be, and especially with real estate agents. The big car, the fancy house, the fancy clothes, and perception is not reality. So living below your means. Don't use credit cards. We have an epidemic in credit cards. If you use a credit card, pay them off because it's very easy to charge something. You don't have the money. And you got to ask yourself, do I need this or do I want it? Most of the time, you'll end up putting it back. Take the money you were planning on spending. Again, put it to you. I call it the wealth building pile. Put the money in a savings account. Call it wealth building account. The last, the number six thing, I talked about starting a real estate investment. Think big. A real estate investment, minimum 10 properties. Now, this is one that could be debated, but I, but I'm very comfortable saying that. Not everybody would agree with me. Be your own financial advisor. If as a real estate agent, for example, why do you need a financial advisor that has no control over your portfolio? You're relying on outside forces, stock market. We all know what the stock market is doing. We know what the economy is doing. So some people may debate me. I have 100% of my money invested in real estate. Now, I will make a confession though. I had, I had some money on the bank and I thought, I'm going to try this. I put $100,000 in, a, in a, a Fidelity 500 index fund and it's driving me crazy. They go up and down, up and down, up and down. My real estate chart is going up like this. So be your own financial advisor. Who knows you need more? You or the financial advisor, they have no control. So those seven things will let anybody create a million dollar business that's, that's when it's paid off, they'll have six-figure income. And a million dollars is not hard to become a millionaire real estate investor. Trust me, it's not that hard. That's great. Okay? Yeah, uh, it's the consistency, right? It's the consistency of, of just continuing to follow that pattern you just said of saving, investing, having a having a trusted advisor, um, you know, not using credit cards, continuing to rebuild that account, that wealth building account that is then reinvest and redeployed into an investment. It's just rinse, repeat. It's just continuously doing the things. Um, you want to add to that? I, I, I can see. I, um, I'm a very simplistic person. Okay. Uh, um, I'm a kind of a street guy. I started, I had a degree, I started in physical education and it was too hard for me. So I got a degree in recreation. If you know what recreation is, it's the lowest level degree you get in college. So my degree is a BS degree in education. And it has served me very well. Yeah. Because what I've learned in real estate, I've learned from other people, you know, mimicking, listen to people. And uh so that's why I love real estate because it's easy, it's simple. Uh, real estate agents make this way too difficult for their client. They make it complicated. Most people don't want to know the 19 formulas I can teach anybody. Cash flow, appreciation, net operating income, gross rent multiplier, break-even ratio, cash on cash. Most people don't even know what that is. So we make it very difficult, very complicated. You know, it's so simple that it's beyond me why more people are invested. People need our help, Jimmy. Every one of these clients need a help. You've got 600 people on your database. Why add 200 more? Why not work your database into three circles? The inner circle, which is all their sphere. The middle circle is the, the people that do business. And the outer circle is the most important circle. Those are the people that help me and other investors create wealth. The contractors, they need, no one's calling them. No financial advisor is calling the corporate lady and say, hey, I want to help you uh, become wealthy. They don't have enough money. 
But the amazing thing you could do as a real estate agent, help those people create a little bit of financial security. It might be one, two, three houses. I've got stories after story of stories of people that I've helped. Amazing. People that weren't even born in this country came here, you know, 10 years ago, and they got a million dollars worth of real estate because they work hard. They work hard for the money, and they're not looking. All they want to do is provide for their family. The American dream is alive and well. I'm living it, and so can everybody else. Work hard, no gimmicks, you know, be be uh, patient, and you will see how this wealth creation happens slowly but steady, okay? You can be very safe. You can sit on the sidelines and wave at people like a marathon. Hey, good job, good job. Or you can be a participant because if you are a participant, it's so amazing uh, safe, but you don't get anywhere. You know, they say real estate is risky. I ask the question, is living paycheck to paycheck more risky than real estate? You bet it is. And I'm going to wrap it up with this. Yesterday, I got a call from an 85-year-old guy. He was uh, at the doctor's part from our building. He said, Fred, I just was by your building. Kind of just about made me uh, get teary-eyed. He said, you know, without you, I wouldn't be able to enjoy my retirement. This is going back 35 years ago. And I didn't offer anything. He said, Fred, I want to thank you for what you did for me. And that's the reward you get. It's not commission checks. Commission check will come. You'll get more commission checks if you lose yourself in service to others. Don't worry about a commission check. Worry about helping people solve their problems. Real estate is the ticket right now for any agent that wants to remain relevant. Because what you just said, housing, the interest rate, we could talk about this. People need real estate. I can tell you, Fred, that I'm one of those that actually, um, I mean, I know dozens and dozens of people who you've changed their life. And those are just people that are in our real estate, um, in the real estate business. So just thank you for all that you do, being a champion for um, helping people. And, um, you know, the, the bottom line, like you said, this is about helping other people. And if when you focus on helping other people, um, you just get to a point where um, everything else takes care of itself. And you even get one of those money jackets like you got on right there. So look, this is what happens when you when you stay consistent and you help people, right? Um, That's exactly Fred, right. How would, people find, how would people find your books? How can they find more information? Where should they go if they want to reach out to you? Um, what's the best way to do that? The best way you could uh, call me. Uh, 402-679-3914. Uh, don't text me because that's sometimes I get too many texts. And I, I Just call me. I like personal contact, no texting. Uh, you can email me at, uh, you know, fred.tishower at bhsamb.com. Uh, you can uh, follow me on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I do a lot of blogging. I do, uh, I started doing these videos that took me years to get the courage. So uh, I think well. I've got good content. So anyway, you can find me on the internet. Very easy. I, when I tell you this, Jimmy, some people don't mean what they say. I will help anybody that, if they're willing to help themselves. So uh, my that, phone so. is available and uh, my books are available on Amazon. And in the next yeah. month or so, not only got these three books, but I, I'm going to have three more books coming out, Gear for Children, 8 to 10, 12 years old, about investing in real estate, you know, analyzing properties and flipping properties, gear to their knowledge. I want to get them started thinking about with their parents. So these books, I think, are going to be amazing. There's nothing like it. And uh, if you would have told me that uh, I'll be writing books, I would say, you're crazy. <laughs> My degree in recreation. But yeah. you know what? It took me five years to do the clients for life. So. Clients for life, is it better to buy and hold a flip or uh, follow the golden brick road, the ultimate path to financial freedom? Those books are available in Omaha. A great Christmas present to give to clients. But the first book you should be buying is Clients for Life. That is that is the roadmap to help agents step by step what they should be doing with scripts, questions to ask. So uh, they seem to, people that get it, they seem to enjoy it. They appreciate it. And there's nothing like it. There's no books I've been written for real estate agents about investing. There's a lot of books about investing, but not geared to real estate agents. I am an active agent. I'm an active investor. I do what I say others should do. So it's not that I'm sitting behind the desk, do this, this, and that. Whatever I tell people, I do myself. So that hopefully speaks value.
that done. Whether you listen to me or not, it's up to you. If you want to change your financial future, what are you going to do differently in 2024? You can't change results if you continue to do the same thing over and over. So try real estate. The worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to be you're going to be amazed. Okay, you're going to be amazed. So nothing to lose. You're already not doing anything. So if you if you do something, you're going to prove number one, your quality of life, your financial future, and someday we can have a conversation. Thirty years from now, when I'm 120, and if uh, if real estate has uh, made an impact with you or not. So with that, I probably I've given you my take on, and I'm going to stick with it as long as I'm able. And my message will never change. It's such a good message, too. Thank you, my friend. Um, listen, if you've gotten some value out of this, and I know you did from Fred, reach out and let him know how much you appreciate it. I can't uh, recommend the books any higher. So um, I hope this has been helpful, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching the video. I specifically chose the video below for you because it builds on the one you just watched. I hope it's helpful, and I'll talk to you soon.